So imagine this. Join the military, junior year high school. We should start boot camp July, um, the year you graduate um, high school. You fall down, you hurt your hands. The military says you can't start in July. So they push you back to your 18th birthday in October. Dead of winter, October, November, December, January, and push-ups, pull-ups, push-ups, pull-ups. Your hands are not feel you healed. Over the next eight years, you're in constant pain. You're using your hands for everything. Running down the steel steps, falling down, so you're grabbing onto the railing so you don't fall down and bust your tail. You're sliding down, do 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 do. Your ankles all messed up, back get messed up, and this is every day, four years straight, in the um, on a ship. That was my life, and so. When I say I have two bad hands, um, I have a, a stable ankle, I have a bad back, I only do I. So, with that said, um, I really want to thank my, my mentor, um, Patrick Bad David um, from Value Tenement. He, yeah, he is 18 days younger than I am. Four born in October, both Libras. I believe it was October 20th or 21st he was born. We're both um, immig immigrants and we both was in the military. He was in the Navy. And he had a video on the 19 lessons the military um, taught him, to, which made him a millionaire. So I just want to share 18 lessons uh, based off his list um, so that you can see the things that the military taught me and what I use in my daily life. So the first thing is managing chaos. You know, everything in the military happens in a stressful environment. Um, when you're military, it's you're always on edge. You're doing five million things at once. You have to go, 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 go. You have to make sure that the machinery is working tip shot, top shape. I was in the engine room, um, the main engine room for the ship. So anything that had to do with water, um, the power for the ship, boilers, um, electricity, all came through um, the engine room that I was in. There was other areas, but the majority of it all had happened there. Whenever the chief engineer, which was an officer, um, came down, he came to my department. And so, in the military, you, to be successful, you have to manage chaos because lives are online, the country is online. And so, the second thing is mission driven. In the military, you have a mission to protect the country and you do it at all costs. Um, lives lost. You, you take risk, but um, you're very mission driven. The third thing is limited resources. You know, you do what you have. You fix machinery with old parts. You figure out a way to save um, things from breaking. You, instead of having to um, buy extra parts, which most times you don't have when you're overseas, um, you have to do what you have. So you become creative and the resources you have to make sure that the ship is running really well. Multitasking. So, people who said, Bevan, you don't multitask well. They assume, they think that everything that I'm doing, there is no purpose behind it. And I'm, I'm a builder, so I build things that I know um, comes together in the grand scheme of things. And that's what I've been doing, and um, I can multitask. And for example, um, in the engine room, there is walls of just different um, readings 
of the equipment. So there's a boiler pressure, there's the EVAP, you have to make sure that the, um, the water level in EVAP is, is, is on point, the temperature is on there, the um, sanitary um, readings on, that are on there, then you have the electrical panel, you have um, all the different equipments are on this one big panel, it's all um, back then, I was in a steamship, and so everything was controlled by air pressure. And just monitor, 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 and I'm just used to making sure that everything's on, on point. And that's just how it is in the military. Um, number five, per perform under pressure. You know, when your life is on the line, you perform under pressure. When the higher up says, yap, 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 this gotta be done, this gotta be done, this gotta be done. And you're always under pressure to succeed. That's one great thing about the military. Number six, manage your risk. Every day, every decision you make can get somebody killed. Um, if you watching um, a machine that spins, if you're not paying attention when you're working, you get caught in there, all of a sudden your hand is gone. Or you die, or you're operating the boiler with nothing but fuel pumping straight in there, and it's on fire and steam coming out of there. If you um, have to do maintenance and a valve is not tight and tight enough, it's not lubed properly, that steam burns and kills somebody. And I've seen where people have gotten the skin peeled off from the steam. It's, it's very, very bad. Um, number seven, they have thick skin. You know, people gonna always yell at you. The military is famous for that, name calling, cursing. I I can handle it. Number eight, building a tribe. One of the biggest things about the military is together you have to rely on other people. Um, and that's something that uh, the military taught me. People look at me and say, Bevan, it's just you and two other people in your team. Yeah, on but what you see, I have other people in other states um, friends who are building things, building the companies, and we're all working together. You just don't happen to see it because it's not up in the front. Um, like right now, I I am not at any event, but I have friends who are, are at events, and they're supporting me by taking out our cards with them to their events, they're building relationships, and in turn, those relationships come back and they become my relationships based on the fact that the friends that I have and the, the individuals who are part of this overall team of us, overall tribe, are all going to the top together and we all help each other. That's a tribe. And when you're doing things for the right reasons, people will naturally gravitate to you to help you um, succeed. Um, number nine, leadership. The military teach you how to lead. And that's something that I'm grateful for, um, to be able to lead and help others become better. That's famous in the military. Um, number 10 is learning other cultures. I'm, multi I'm, I'm multinational, so I am British, in, um, Indian, Black. Um, and so in the military, you meet people from different races, um, people from different countries, people from different states, uh, it's, you go overseas, you go to France, you go to Spain, Portugal, Italy, um, Greece, Turkey, Israel, Malta, Puerto Rico, and when you represent the military, you have to develop relationships with different cultures and understanding them and what they go through so you do not be disrespectful. And that's something that, um, because I have who I am, I was able to take that above and beyond and learn more and improve myself so that when I go overseas, uh, I can blend in. Um, people just gravitate to me. That's who I am. And I'm sy sympathetic, I'm an empath, so I understand people's struggles. Uh, number 11, get a little adapt. Things happen fast. Things move fast, especially in life. And you have to be able to adapt to it and make changes and corrections because if you don't, um, somebody could die, the ship could crash. Um, and a good example of this, so in the, in the engine room, 
we have two big wheels um, in the engine room that I was in. The the aft in the back, which is the back engine room, had only one wheel, and the wheel con um, controls the, the propellers on the ship. So each uh, engine room, we have two engine rooms. The aft one um, had a boiler. The, the forward, which was I was, had a boiler, and the boiler. When you open up each wheel, it increases or decreases the amount of um, uh, steam that's going into the, the engine, and it tells you how fast you want to go. So this it comes up from captain, hey, we need to go faster. You open up a wheel, and you know increases the, um, the speed. So one day we was in general quarters. We were refueling, and someone in the back of the ship, they open up the, um, the wheel too fast. And I'm watching the gauge, and I'm multitasking, because I'm talking to people, I have the headphones on listening to um, messages coming up from the captain, and I saw the, the, the pressure go up. I'm thinking in my head, split decision, something's about to happen. Now, had it been somebody else, we would have ended up crashing the ship because when you have one, uh, what is it, <laughs> one propeller takes off, the ship turns, and so you crash. And when you crash, that affects everybody. That's money, you know, lives could be lost, um, fuel, because we were fueling. Uh, fires, things like that could happen. And so, my quick thinking, I opened up the other um, shaft, the other wheel to decrease the pressure of our, um, our engine to save us from having to crash. Um, I can't remember the exact details, but that was a general review of what happened, and that's because I was able to adapt. Now, Number 12 here, I've survived. I can survive. I know how to survive. The military teaches you how to work on less, um, how if something happens, how to survive and wait for help, um, how to uh, survive and just keep going. That's something I'm very good at and I've been doing it forever. Uh, number 13, independence. Um, I say that the military didn't teach me independence. The military um, made me better at it. I grew up, um, moved around a lot. My mom was in a bad relationship, and so I moved around a lot. Uh, St. Croix, New York, St. Croix, um, Grenada, Florida, Maryland, and then Virginia when I was in the military. And so the military made me better at being um, independent. I don't rely on anybody to do anything. I can do a lot of things for myself. I know how to um, iron my clothes. I know how to sew clothes. I know how to fix cars. I know how to um, build houses. I know how to build websites, you know, I know computers, um, you know, there's, I can, I just learn to be independent and it's helping me so much so now in, um, in everything that I do. Um, fourth is strategic, I'm going to teach you how to be strategic, there's things you, you know, you, if you try A, B or C will happen and you learn certain things and I use that every day in my life. I have to be very strategic on the, you know, the people that I'm around, uh, the projects I take on, who I help. You know, um, if s people offer me so much money here in this industry, it's like, babe, here's money, do this, do that. And I have to be like, no, this is um, this strategic lesson. No, it's not. It's not something that's going to help me be transparent and grow long term. This might affect um, the way I move. Um, so you have to be very um, strategic um, in life, and so that's one thing the military taught me. Um, preparation, you know, prepare for the worst, you know, hope for the best. Um, and so, yeah. And so one thing um, Patrick, um, but David said, paranoia. And I didn't, like, I was like, hmm, you get a point here, you know, whenever I'm out and about, people, this is why I look, I dress the way I dress. I don't like to be in a suit and tie, draw attention to myself, because I like to watch people. I like to assess what's going on. One thing with the military, you always watching to make sure that you're safe, people around you are safe. You, you know, you, you 
expect the worst, but you hope for the best. You know, you prepare yourself. Um, always just watching. That's who I am. I'm a watchful and I see who is, can help me uh, move up, who cannot. Um, 17, work ethic. You know, we go. Um, I worked 60, 7, 8 hours in my last couple of jobs. You know, I. Um, so, in the last two jobs, I do coding, right? And one of the things that when you work at an agency is, let's say, I have to, um, I have to add some graphics to the, to the website for a client. And the normal procedure is, comes in, goes to a ticket, then ticket goes to the designer, which takes a couple of days, the designer fix it, made a mistake, gotta go back, you know, maybe I'm taking a week, then it comes to me to um, implement it. And I learned Photoshop, I learned different tools to help me be a better person, just be, you know, I've always learned, wanted to um, create, and so learning Photoshop helped me. So for example, boss came, this is both jobs, Hey Bevan, um, this client, uh, top lawyer, or top doctor, you know, spending 10 grand on a project, you know, um, because that 10 grand could make him $100,000 or a million dollars when it comes to lawyers. And can you change his graphics? Um, designer is out sick or designer has a bunch of stuff on their plate. I could have said no, send up the food chain and I, you know, let him do it. But I said yes. I go, Photoshop, 10 minutes later, boom, boom, boom. Uh, up on the website, client happy. You know, that's customer service right there. Um, that's work ethic. I, I know how to survive. And then lastly, number 18, discipline. You know, you have to have discipline when you're in the military to trust that everything's gonna be okay. You gotta trust that the things you're doing is gonna work out and you do it. When you stick to certain things, um, this is the results. And if you're not doing things in a bad manner with a bad intention, nine times out of 10, um, everything comes out okay. You know, there are things that happen, you know, um, accidents happen, there are things that's uncontrollable. But when you have a discipline, the discipline teaches you how to survive and be adaptable. And so, those are the 18 lessons the military taught me. Um, I'm grateful for my mentor, Patrick Bay Davis, and Value Entertainment. Um, if you're looking for a mentor and, and you want to be an entrepreneur, he's the perfect person. And it's, not, it's also great that he's also a Libra. Um, we both like balance um, and he just reminds me of myself and so yeah that's my story um, please subscribe support us CBD how get that book right there CBD how slash book um, thank you so much for um, all the support to me appreciate you all so much beautiful beautiful week people peace there are those that said your pain isn't real too slow, too hard, too soft, too old, too limited. To them, we say too bad. Everyone deserves good and clean CBD. Wow.